This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. What goes on in someone's life leading up to someone falling into a cult? And we all think, oh, you must be kind of crazy. You must be something out there uh, to, to join it. But but it's, that's not usually the case. There's very smart, educated people who've fallen into these sort of things. What kind of, of life leading up to entering into that do we typically see? Is it someone who's been indoctrinated by other religions over time? Maybe he was brought up with some sort of religion and a bit of magical thinking. Maybe they're not part of it anymore, but but at some point in their life, it was it was real, maybe just in childhood. Um, it, does that make them more prone to, to fall into to traps like this? Yeah, I think people who have a propensity to magical thinking are definitely at risk. Um, the other thing is people who are needy, because you can be a really smart, high-functioning person with intelligence, but still be so emotionally needy. And maybe that's not even obvious to the rest of the world. You know, we think of a lot of people in Hollywood, you know, who are so craving attention. They just do these bizarre things just to get attention mm -hmm. because it feeds that need that they have. And so it is possible to look fairly normal on the outside, but you're, you've got some missing parts on the inside. And that's what I think the cult leaders tap into so effectively. And a lot of times when we think of neediness, we think of something that people, you know, that's nourishing, that's going to be good for them. But for something like this, uh, a narcissist or what have you, that, that, that neediness that, that's, that they, they crave, it doesn't necessarily have to be good. I mean, it, it, right? I mean, can it, it can be bad. Does it basically essentially activate the same thing in their mind, whether no matter what the input is, good or bad, as long as they're getting that sort of attention uh, that they crave? Yeah. Yeah, it sure can be. And and the other interesting thing which we see here is is they can do things that we would look at objectively and say that's a terrible thing or that's an evil thing, murdering kids. My gosh. But you know, you get people in a certain mindset and this group think going on, and they can convince themselves that terrible things are good things. As I often say, you can talk to many prisoners, people who are incarcerated for doing terrible things, but they can give you a list of all the good reasons that they had to do it at the time. Sure. You know, so yeah. people, people really twist reality. Yeah. It's like, I can do all these horrible things over here, but I did these good things. So that must, mm -hmm. that must vindicate me. Like that's, that's mm -hmm. not quite how that works. Lori's niece uh, took the stand this week as well, Melanie Pulowski, uh, talking about, uh, you know, again, grooming that was going on with Chad uh, and uh, learning about light and dark, what that all means. Would you say at some point you developed a close relationship with Chad? Um, yes. At some point, did you eventually begin referring to him as dad? Yes. At some point, did Lori and Chad begin sharing teachings with you or their purported beliefs? Yes. Do you recall them sharing some teachings regarding light and dark? Yes. Do you know where those ideas were originating from? I believe they came from Chad. Do you recall what they taught you or told you in relation to light and dark? Um, from what I remember... Um, Chad was said to have a gift to spiritually discern and he could see um, light and dark or if a person um, had good intentions, um, but that he could see through and had that gift. Light and dark, he's got the gift. We're seeing more and more uh, things pointing in the way of Chad being uh, more of a mastermind of this than Lori. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think the theology all came from Chad. I, I don't think there's any doubt about that. Lori was, you know, crazy enough to buy into it completely and had, which is very hard for me to understand, had romantic designs on him. Um, I don't really, can't wrap my mind around what the attraction could have yeah. been. But she had an agenda with the guy, and so she swallowed his theology completely. Um, but yeah, he was the mastermind of uh, this crazy stuff. Are you surprised at all in this? I'm surprised we haven't heard any of this. Uh, you know, they they say a lot the, the cases. It's about uh, money, sex, and and power, basically, and, and very extreme beliefs. Um, that there's not more of a sexual component to this story, that it's just him and Lori. A lot of cult leaders end up going and getting with everybody uh, that they can get their hands on. Yeah. Uh, 
That has not come to light at all in, in any of this uh, from Lori's trial to here. Are you surprised by that? Or did they just not develop the cult enough for Chad to get there? Right. I think it would have gone there yeah. um, in time. And his relationship with Lori was so new and exciting. He was all about the goddess with her, you know. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, eventually over time, I think that kind of stuff doesn't usually happen immediately. Mm -hmm. So you would have to get a few years in and, <laughs> you know, a few a few more followers. And then yeah. we would have seen the craziness um, <laughs> grow exponentially. But I think there would have been a lot of murders. I mean, yeah. for starting off with such a new group, the killing that they were doing, you know, oh, yeah. to free the zombies or whatever the heck this was all about. Oh. Um, these people were dangerous. So well, yeah, thankfully I mean, we caught them. Yeah. I mean, here's another uh, clip. This is Lori's niece, Melanie Pulowski, again, uh, talking about people dying because they had turned dark, according to Chad. There was some type of um, darkness that you couldn't cast out. And so if this, um, that the Lord in his due time would have to take, um, that that person would pass away because this darkness was too much or something like that. So if someone were to be possessed and with a strong enough entity, essentially the body would have to die. Judge, that's leading, calls for speculation. That's a sustain on leading. If someone became too dark, would the body have to die? Judge leading. Overruled. Um, I I believe so. That I think that was their idea that the they would pass away because they couldn't um, have this darkness inside them. Wow. I mean, is this something that that they him and Lori sat there and plotted? Like, here's here's the ground rules for our cult. Here's the ground rules of what our belief system is. Because all this kind of comes out of weird places here. How do they define this stuff? Do they just kind of make it up as they go? And then, well, we've established this here, so we got to keep going down that narrative. Yeah, my guess with the way this is looking is that this originally just came from Chad and Lori nodded her head and said, great plan, you know, I go along with it. But I, I see him as, you know, just incredibly dangerous. And anybody that did not agree with Chad was dark. Mm -hmm. And so how many people would they ultimately have killed if they had not gotten caught? I think it's really scary. Sick of the ads? We opt to. Start listening with no commercials now and get access to all of our episodes in advance of everyone else. Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts or go to our podcast page and sign up now. True Crime Today Premium Plus. Sign up now.